Welcome. The subject of this video is how to build a power MOSFET H-bridge for Arduino, PIC, and what other hobby microcontroller you might have. This is your host, Lewis Laughlin. Catch my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Once again, an H-bridge is simply a set of switches used to alter the polarity on a permanent magnet motor, thus changing the direction of rotation. In the past, one used mechanical switches or even relays as shown above. Today, we use bipolar or MOSFET transistors. Here is a schematic of a basic uh, MOSFET H-bridge configuration. Notice the motor here in the middle. <coughs> you notice the way this you have two P-channel MOSFETs Q2 and Q4 that are turned off and on by Q5 and Q6. Then you have two in-channel MOSFETs on the ground side, Q1 and Q3, that are turned on and off directly with a connection to Arduino or any other microcontroller. A quick review of MOSFETs. All right. Um, here's your basic MOSFET circuit. You will, uh, if you put 5 volts onto the gate, it will switch on like you pressed an electric switch. Notice here is our uh, gate bleeder resistor. You've got to have these or else it won't turn on and off properly. Um, in this case, this is an in-channel IRF630 rated at 200 volts, 9 amps, and when cut on, it has a resistance of 0.4 ohms. Here is the uh, pinout of the transistor, the internal inside you notice it has an internal parasitic suppression diode. Here is the P-channel MOSFET with its associated switch transistor. The reason I have to use Q1 is I have to keep the uh, 12 volts on the gate off of the Arduino. So instead I use the Arduino to operate Q1 um, to act as a switch. The Q1 is a 2N2222 2222 NPN transistor. Here is your symbol for your uh, positive channel uh, MOSFET. You notice the arrow points away from the basing over here. That's where you go back over here. On the N channel it points inward. And like the uh, like its um, in-channel cousin, the P-channel has also its own internal spike suppression diode. These are used for running motors, relays, contactors, and other electromagnetic devices. Quick note on voltage gain source. On both of these transistors, you switch them on and off by a, uh, vo a voltage difference between source and gate. In the case of this setup where the source is going to VCC, I have to have a gate voltage of at least 5 volts, preferably 0. VGS is the maximum voltage difference between source and gate. If you exceed 20 volts in this particular transistor, for instance, you will blow the transistor. Over here, the most you can put on is 5 volts, so that's not much to be concerned with. <coughs> Alright, once again, here is your basic outline before of a um, four MOSFETs used as switches in the uh, in H bridge configuration. Our gate bleeder resistors, these four are all 10K. The two input resistors for Q5 and Q6 are 2.2K. With all the inputs low, the only thing the motor is doing is just hanging there. It's just floating. It's like it doesn't exist. Now, 
If I was to make Q5 high and Q6 high, I will switch both of those transistors on and they will switch on Q2 and Q4 respectively. And I have 12 volts on both sides of the motor. The motor does not run. With lows and lows down here, these Q1 and Q3 are switched off. Now I got highs on Q1 and Q3 and both of those are switched on, but that's not going to help because all I've done is switch both sides of the motor to ground. The motor doesn't run. A quick note and a warning as you'll see in the corner of all these tiles. Never ever ever cut on Q, um, Q1 and Q2 aka Q5. Never cut on Q1 and Q2 Q2 at the same time and never cut on Q3 or Q4 at the same time because if you look at this you're going to short the power supply right to ground and you're going to have something go boom in the night. So make sure you understand that warning. Alright, now it gets to be fun. Q5 is high. It switches on and it switches on Q2 which supplies 12 volts to the positive side of our motor. On this side I, I have Q3 is high switching it on and it switches the negative side to ground. So what I've got here is current flow from Q3 through the motor through Q2 back to VCC and my motor runs in the forward direction. Alright, here's the other example. This time I've got a high on Q1, turns it on, switches the positive side of the motor to ground. I cut on Q6 with a high. It's going to go low, switching on Q4 and supplies 12 volts to the negative side of the motor. The motor, of course, is will run in reverse due to the fact that the negative pole is positive and positive is at zero. So the motor runs in reverse. Another variation of this, instead of four inputs, we can make this into two inputs. What I've done is connect the gate of Q1 to the gate of Q2. I've connected the gate of Q3 up to the gate of Q4. This side I'll call B, this side I will call A. With no inputs on A or B, both low, um, the voltage at A and B will move up to 12 volts. 12 volts on the gate of Q3 and Q1 will switch both of them on. So with no input, the motor on both sides is switched to ground. <coughs> In the other variation, I have a high on A and a high on B. I, I turn on Q5, which turns on Q2. I turn on Q6, which turns on Q4. And what I've done is switch both sides of the motor to 12 volts. The motor, of course, doesn't run. Like I said, when, this, when either one of these two transistors switch on, the voltage on the gate of these two transistors goes to zero and they cut on. Now we get some motor motion. In this case input A is high. I switch on Q5 which switches on Q2 which supplies 12 volts to the plus side of the motor. In this case I have a low which leaves Q3 switched on and I have a path to ground. So now I've got a path through Q3, through the motor, through Q2, back up to VCC. The motor runs in the forward direction. Let's reverse this. Now I have a low on A and a high on B. Q6 will switch on from the high. It will cut on Q4 and deliver 12 volts to the negative side of the motor. By leaving that low, Q5 is switched off. This switches on Q1 which connects the positive post of the motor to ground. 
This is now reversed and the motor will run in reverse. The advantage of this setup is there's no possible way to blow up the transistors nor, under most circumstances. I can make them high low, low high, both high, both low, and I can never go back and short them out like in this configuration. Won't happen. Incidentally, if you are using transistors, our MOSFETs in this case, you know, transistors are drawn here, same holds for MOSFETs. If the MOSFETs do not have the internal diodes like the TIP120 and 125 did, you will have to add your own external diodes as you see here. This is to suppress transient and switching noise from the motor. <coughs> Excuse me. In another case here, this is, this is the same circuit that I used in my Arduino solar battery charge controller to switch uh, on and off. In this case, this is our high side switch, which was basically back in these things, Q2 and Q4. All right, you remember I told you VGS of these particular uh, transistors was only 20 volts. If I connect this to 20 volts over here instead of 12, I'll have a difference in gate source voltage of 24 volts when I switch it on and I will blow the transistor. Instead, insert a Zener diode between the uh, switching transistor collector and the gate of the uh, P-channel MOSFET. When you switch this on, you'll only end up with a difference of about, in this case, 14 volts, because this will stay about 10.5 when switched on. 10.5 from 24 is going to give me, uh, what, 13.5 or something like that? And that's well within the 20 volts. So that's something to pay attention to. And that's all there is for this introduction to MOSFET H bridges. bridges excuse me. Uh, visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thanks for viewing.